Welcome back to Dr. Hollowed. Join us as we uncover some of the most bizarre sights hikers have encountered on the trails. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. One time while deep in our forest rooting around in the national forest, our group had been exploring old Loggia roads. One that we drove down had an abandoned trailer that had been shot 1000x and was in a complete state of disrepair. Littered around the camp were signs tacked onto trees that read Anunnaki go home and one other that said some other weird cryptic message that I couldn't figure out. I definitely got some spooky vibes from there and haven't been able to locate the area afterwards, thankfully. My wife and I went hiking on a trail in Georgia. When we got to the trailhead to park, there was a car with four flats and the windows busted out. We still took our chances. I hiked all day and never saw another soul, but I did come upon a campsite that had been abandoned. All the equipment was left, but no backpacks. The next day, we hiked back the way we came in and stopped suddenly when we came upon a college biology textbook right in the middle of the trail we had hiked the previous day. Again, I still had not seen anyone, but it was clear that someone was out there. We hiked as fast as we could back to the car and never went back there. Not seen, but heard. I usually go for a walk in my local forest park, usually once a day. It's a good way for me to relax, and there are some good trails since it's on a pretty steep hill. I was out for a walk one day when it happened to be pretty foggy one morning. There are some good views in the area, especially on some of the steeper trails, but you couldn't see them because the maximum visible range at this point was 5 to 10 meters away. The park also happens to be near a high school, to the point where you can easily go into the park from a short two-minute walk. So it was a popular place for students to go if they wanted to cut class. Sure enough, there were some students who were hiding at one of the hiking trails from the park rangers who would have hauled their asses back to the school. And in the fog, blasting on a Bluetooth speaker, two cheeky fuckers were playing the theme song of Silent Fucking Hill. I frequented a trail in southwest Virginia and came across a plastic bottle with a picture in it. I picked it up to examine it and saw that the picture was of a naked middle-aged woman with her face blacked out by a sharpie or something. It was weird, but I'm not a fan of litter, so I took it to a trash can and threw it out. I walked the trail again a few days later, and much to my dismay, whoever left it there came back and left an identical bottle with the same picture and the same marked out face. This time, I just decided to leave it because it freaked me out. Since then, I've found several strange things on and in the area around that trail, but the only thing that came close to the bottle picture was a decapitated baby doll with its body on the ground next to some presumably stolen car radios and its head stuck through a branch up in a nearby tree. I still love going down and around that trail anyway, it's got some awesome train tracks, tunnels, and bridges to run around on. Two cops. A weird story. There was a spot where we went camping all the time. You had to park and walk out there for about half a mile. It was remote, but just off some main roads. We got there a little late, and it was already getting dark. It took a little while to set up camp. We had a little trouble getting the fire going but managed too. We were just getting settled, and these two fully uniformed cops walked into the camp. I swear, I don't know how we didn't hear them. They must have really been trying to be silent. They were immediately aggressive and demanding. They didn't pull their guns, but they had their hands on their holsters. They made us all stand together and go through all our gear. They looked in the fire and really got suspicious because they saw some burned business cards and other bits of paper in the fire. After a while, we finally got the story. Someone called the cops, saying they saw four people carrying a body into the woods. It was obviously our camping gear. When the cops saw the bits of paper in the fire, they thought we were burning the items of the person we killed, we were just trying to get the fire started. They finally left because it was obviously four kids camping, and some idiots reported it as a crime. The cops said something like, we will be back. Of course, they never came back. This was around May 2012. I had just finished graduate school and was ready for a break. I was way out in the back country of the Rocky Mountains, a ways north of Santa Fe. I just needed to get away for a while and clear my head. My third day out, I came across this wildly beautiful meadow, and for whatever reason, I decided I should just cancel my day and stay there for the day. I set up camp, a small tent, and made a little fire. I sit back and relax, just taking in all the sights, and think about how this is such an amazing place, but it's remote. Just a little while before the sun goes down, I notice a blaze on a tree, maybe 150 feet away. It was so odd because none of the maps had a trail in the area. I went over to it to see if I could find any more or an actual trail. Nothing. Just the one. Then I thought maybe someone marked it as a grave, but how could someone carry someone's body that far? 
It's too far, not a grave. It was getting dark, so I went back to my fire, made a little dinner, and went to sleep. The next morning, as I get up and break down camp, I keep catching myself looking at that blaze. It was so weird. Then something caught my eye across the meadow. It was an old box or trunk thing. How did that get way out here? Really weird. I finished packing, put my pack on, and walked over to the trunk. Someone had left all this fake old jewelry, coins, cheap Native American trinkets like you could find on a roadside stand, bracelets, so strange. Why would someone bring that crap all the way out here? And then leave it? I tried to follow LNT and wanted to pack it out, but it was about 35 extra pounds of weight, so I left it. I wonder if it's still there sometimes or if anyone else has ever found that before me or since. Maybe it was a geocache? Who knows? Right after I graduated high school, I went on a camping trip with my friends. One night, we decided to go on a night hike. First, on our drive up the first part of the mountain, it was just really creepy, so we were already spooked. Then I almost drove off the side of the mountain, it was a gravel road that I should have been driving a jeep on and instead drove a minivan. It was all a recipe for disaster, but we stuck to it. Finally, get started on our hike. No cars or anything are there. I hadn't seen any cars the whole 30 mile drive there. And as we are walking, we see a bunch of people all in a circle twirling fire. It freaks us out, and we all race back to the car and book it out of there. I went waterfall hunting with a friend, and we found a really beautiful one in the middle of nowhere. It was really hard to get to, we don't have trails here, just ribbons tied to trees that you follow. It was getting late, and we found a knife stuck in a tree. We were talking about it, and just as we turned to walk back, we saw a tassie devil eyeing us from a few meters away. It stayed completely still like it thought we hadn't noticed it, it had fresh blood on its face. When we tried to edge around it, it screamed, they sound like someone being murdered, if that paints a picture, and darted back into the underbrush. It followed us all the way back to our car as it was getting dark. We could hear it in the bushes, as well as more devils screaming up the hill. Yeah. I never went there again. One time, I was hiking with my dog, and our hike intersected a river or sandbar. It was clear that you could also pretty much drive right up to the sandbar if you didn't want to hike the trail. A woman pulled right up to the sandbar, opened the tailgate of her SUV, and, I kid you not, 30 chihuahuas came out. I've got a pretty big dog, and he was terrified of the swarm of chihuahuas. They played in the sand and would run up to the water, and they all seemed to be having a great time, but my dog clearly didn't want to get too close to them. I think one of the weird parts was that they clearly didn't plan to stay for long, because after a few minutes, this lady and her husband started trying to round up their chihuahua swarm. As you can imagine, it was chaos, and it was pretty entertaining to watch these two run around in circles chasing tiny dogs. So yeah, the weirdest thing I've seen while hiking is an excessive amount of chihuahuas. So I was probably the strangest thing someone saw. I was hiking a 14er in Colorado and at the point I am on the trail I am long past the tree line. The ecosystem at that point is called alpine tundra. Well while walking through this highland beauty I feel a familiar rumbly in my tummy. I have to shit and not a little bit. It's a big boy. I can't hide behind anything in sight, so I'm a little worried, but I keep hiking, maybe I'll find a boulder or a ridgeline to hide behind. Eventually, things become dire. Necessity is, of course, the mother of invention, and in this case, the mother of creativity. I realize that if I can find even a small boulder, I can squat down so no one can see me. Eureka! I see a boulder probably 100 meters off the trail to the right. I am far enough away that no one will see me. I run to the boulder, and it is smaller than I hoped for, but it'll do. I drop the trout and take me dump. Instant relief, but with this relief came a terrible realization. I didn't bring toilet paper. I look around. Grass? Snow? Dear Lord, a smooth stone? My kingdom for something paper. I open my backpack and thankfully find a scheduling permit for a licensing exam that I had taken, not important, but I didn't do stellar on the exam and was still bitter. I use the permit to wipe my rear and have another realization. While the boulder I am squatting behind hides me from the part of the trail I had come from, I did not realize in my hast that roughly 20 meters further up the trail from where I had left it, it takes a hard right. I am squatting, shitting, and wiping my ass with printer paper, completely exposed to hikers coming down the hill. Not only that, but as I realize this, there is a young woman hiking down towards my boulder, where I am still crouched like Gollum, looming over the precious, no pants, with a shit-stained scheduling permit in my hand. She avoided eye contact, but she saw me. I knew it. She knew it. God knew it, and he was shaking his head. 
I did eventually make it to the top of the mountain, and it was my first 14er. I'm never going to forget that view. My family is in the cattle business back in Chile, up in the mountains. One early morning, at 5 a.m. or so, my dad and I were driving to our ranch when we saw a dog run across the road and make a clean jump over a seven-foot tall wall. We kept driving in complete silence, and a couple miles down the road, I broke the ice. Did you see the dog? I asked, and he replied, the one that didn't look like a dog? The same one. I finished. Fast forward a couple of months, and we are going up the mountains once more, and we saw what we thought was a roadkill. We got down the truck with all our dogs to remove the animal from the road when the dog started growling to a nearby bush, and once more, the didn't look like a dog jumped and ran this time up a hill with all my dogs in pursuit. My dad grabbed his gun, but by the time he got back from the truck, our dogs were already crying back to us, scared. We've seen them fight dogs, mountain lions, and other animals, and they've never been scared before. Lucky for us, this time we had a better sight of it. It was bluish-gray, with front legs longer than the back ones, and walked run more like Professor Lupin as a werewolf in Harry Potter films. Up to this day, we wonder what that thing was. It was not a hike but a trail ride, but I am quite certain someone was trying to murder me. I was in my 20s and new in town when I was invited by a handsome guy to meet some people for a trail ride. It rained heavily, and no one showed up. I decided to hit the trail anyway, alone. It was extremely muddy. On the way back, there was a creek, so I took my back down it to rinse the mud off. While I'm down the embankment, I see a man coming in the opposite direction, and he sees me, hides behind a tree, and watches me. I figured it was a good time to leave. As I headed up the embankment, he came from behind the tree. He had a bandana wrapped around his wrist that he was taking off. He started to garret the bandana around his hands and tried to engage me in conversation, to disarm me, of course. He raised his hands toward the height of my neck, but I was able to take off on my bike. The thing that was really creepy was that on his arm, where his bandana was, he had the exact same bandana pattern tattooed on his arm. Not me, but my grandpa and his friend were hunting in Cali. They decided you should go this way around the hill, I'll go this way. If we shuffle the deer out, hopefully they'll run towards one of us. Grandpa's friend all of a sudden hears shots, he ducks and starts looking through his scope. Finally, he spots a guy across a small valley, shooting at him with a handgun. I'm talking hundreds of yards away. He starts yelling, stop shooting, or I'll shoot. He didn't know what was going on. Dude didn't stop, just keep reloading and trying to shoot him. So he aims his rifle and takes one shot. Dude staggers away out of sight. Grandpa's friend calls the cops on himself and says I just shot a man who was shooting at me first. He says this is where I'm located, I'll wait for authorities in case there's more men lying in wait. Authorities show up, and he leads them over. They find a camp. I followed the blood trail, found the guy dead, and just a bit away was a giant cannabis field being grown in the middle of the woods. Dude was guarding the cannabis. This was before legal weed in California. 20 years ago, at least. Grandpa's friend was let go based on self-defense. The cops said I would have shot him too. We were on some trail that we are very familiar with, and we were going to spend the night on the mountain. As we were going up, we saw some guys on the opposite small mountain moving some rocks. They couldn't see us because we were on a side that had a lot of trees. When we got a bit closer, we used our binoculars and realized that one of them was a local drug dealer, I live on a Greek island, so a drug dealer here is not as dangerous as you think. It took us about an hour to get where they were, and we were sure that they hid something there. We were right. They had about half a kilo of Mary Jane hidden beneath some rocks. We took some and left a 20 euro bill in the bag. We smoked some on the top of the mountain, watching an astronomical event with shooting stars that was happening that night. Later the same night, we started seeing small yellow lights all around us. We started panicking until we realized that they were goats. I was on a school excursion to Brazil's Pantanal. We were walking a trail when, after a fallen tree, we stumbled upon a succuri. It is a serpent, literally the famous anaconda. It must have been at least three meters long, it just strung across the path, immobile. We started to freak out, but the guide told us to calm down. It was the landowner's pet snake, and it had been recently fed, it was just sunbathing. Of course we expected to see some wild animals, but it was weird to see someone referring to a giant snake that could literally swallow any of us whole after breaking every bone in our body by its pet name. Later the same day, me and a friend almost stepped on an alligator's tail, but that was much less frightening because it was way smaller than the snake. One of my dad's business partners is an avid hiker who regularly walks trails all over the US. 
He told dad and I this story from a time he walked the Rocky Mountains, how he came across what looked like an abandoned campsite, a ruined tent, old rotting food, a used fire pit, and even old looking clothes. He kept going up the trail but turned back because he could hear a cougar screaming in the distance. When he got back to where the campsite was, it was all gone. The only thing that was there before was the fire pit. When he got back down to his car, he came across a ranger who told him that the campsite had been there for six years. It's weird that someone would just randomly show up and take it down, especially when dad's business partner was the only car in the parking lot for that trail in the last two hours. He never went back to that trail because it freaked him out. I wouldn't say it was strange, but more bizarre. I was in maybe middle school, 30 now, and my dad took me to a trail up in the Adirondack Mountains. When we got there, we saw a guy sleeping in his bed, no biggie. My dad went there the next day to check something else out on the trail that I didn't want to do because I was tired, but that car was still there, dude in the same position. Mind you, we showed up mid-afternoon. Dad called the police and let them know the situation. Years later, we went back to visit, and dad began chatting with a firefighter, and he happened to ask if the guy remembered hearing about anything about a guy who was sleeping in his car, which the firefighter remembered. He told us that he was found borderline dead and shit pissed himself because he tried to kill himself by drinking antifreeze. He didn't succeed, as he told us he's now permanently on dialysis and blind slash partial paralysis. I caught a mama bear stealing from our bear proof food bag we had strung up on a tree limb. This was in Little Yosemite Valley in the mid 1970s. I was backpacking with a couple of friends from high school and my younger sister. My family went to Yosemite every summer when I was a kid, so this was our first solo trip without the parents. As such, I was quite familiar with bears in Yosemite Valley. They were considered a nuisance in the valley. And though they were potentially dangerous and very smart, the bears would generally leave well enough alone if you created a lot of racket, like hitting pots and pans against each other or standing tall and yelling at them. Armed with this knowledge, I took decisive action. I watched the bear as she stuck her paw out from her perch in the tree and started whacking at the food bag. She eventually slashed a long strip down the bag. I watched in horror as our food items fell to the ground, one or two at a time. As the bear was back on the ground and pawing through our grub, this is when I chose to scare the bear, making the typical pot and pan noise, standing tall, and yelling or growling at her. Wrong approach. The mama stopped what she was doing, and she now got up on her hind legs, looking like she was going to charge me. I backed down slowly, still watching her. She got a beef sausage in her teeth and headed over to where her babies were patiently waiting. I nearly fainted. This is from my cousin. He was hiking on a trail near the Olympic Mountain Range in Washington State with a few friends. The trail led all the way to a cliff that immediately dropped off into the Pacific Ocean. On the way back, the sun had gone down, and it was nighttime. His friends and he then spotted a group of about four people huddled around what seemed like a campfire, but they couldn't tell for sure because they were huddled around it. This didn't make any sense because the trail was only a few feet wide, and starting a campfire would not be safe. Nonetheless, he keeps walking closer to these people down the trail with his friends. Eventually they all call out to get these people's attention so they can move off the trail and let them pass, but there is no response. As they get closer, they keep calling out to them with no response. Eventually they're a few feet from the group of people, and they realize there is no campfire, but it feels like there is one, and there's still a glowing light in the center of the huddled strangers. They ask once again for them to move, and there's been no response whatsoever. This gives everyone the chills, and they all scoot by the group of strangers and immediately bolt down the trail about 100 feet. They look back, and no one is there. The trail is only a few feet wide, so all the strangers could have done was walk forward to escape their vision, but there's just no way unless all the strangers were the flash. They all just make it back to their cars as fast as they can. He later learned the trail used to be used for Native American rituals and burials, so he thinks it might have been natives or native spirits. In the 1970s, my then best friend and I went to the same summer day camp. Once a week, they'd drive us to a state park for the day. They'd arrange games, baseball, soccer, etc., for us to play to keep us kids occupied. My friend and I hated sports and preferred not to play. We'd rather take solitary hikes in the woods and explore, we weren't allowed to go off alone without counselors, so we never asked permission. One time, we came across a milk crate filled with cartons of milk. Right in the middle of the woods. Far from any place that would need it. They weren't even expired, old, or spoiled. It was good, fresh milk. Why would anyone deposit a single crate filled with cartons of fresh milk out in the middle of nowhere? A bear. It wasn't late at night, but the sun was setting. 
a bunch of friends went up to a cliff diving spot that we knew. After a day of swimming and activities, a park ranger saw us and told us to follow a certain trail back, to the parking lot, because it was faster. This was a trail we hadn't seen, and we didn't take it up. We said F it and decided it was okay. After about 1.5 hours of hiking and being lost on the trail, we come to a clearing in the forest with no more trail. Just what was left and a shitton of vegetation. No problem, turn around, right? That was the first time I ever saw a bear full on in person. The first thing I thought about was how effed it would be if we had to run and, even worse, someone getting caught. We just saw it, backed up, and decided, F it, better walk down the mountain than try to go around it. This isn't creepy, but it definitely spooked me. An abandoned camp in the middle of an unpopulated area with no camping. There is no public transportation nearby, it is mostly just a place where local people hike and ride horses. It is a state park with marked trailheads, but the nearest ones are miles away from where I was. This one is really only accessed by locals. It was really, really unnerving because there's nowhere to park near there, it was several miles into a residential road that was off another isolated main road. None of these places have sidewalks, and this spot is not a marked trail. I can't remember if there was a tent, but a sleeping bag, an old fire ring, some alcohol bottles, and some other things were scattered around. It just really weirded me out because it was so out of place, and I was a young woman hiking by myself. I hate running, but I ran the hell out of there and felt like I was being watched for the two or so miles until I got closer to the road. Saran wrap looking thing that climbed from tree to tree. This happened in the Philippines. I wouldn't say it's on a trail, but my grandparents had a mango tree grove that covered almost 130 acres. One afternoon, me and two of my cousins were having snacks on the balcony when we saw this thing appear climbing down from a mango tree, then climbing up on the next tree or reaching on another tree branch to traverse it. It was hard for us to describe it at that time, but to the best of my memory, it was a flat, freeform, see-through looking thing that could stretch and used its four corners to grab onto branches, hence why I called it saran wrap. One of the weird parts is that this thing looked as light as a feather, but when it grabbed the branches, or if it was on a branch, the branch crackled as if it had tremendous weight. Another weird thing is that the grove is usually noisy with birds chirping, but when this thing appeared, it was dead silent. That evening, we told our uncle and grandpa about what we saw. My uncle grabbed a dried stingray tail from a cabinet and hung it on the wall on the balcony. My grandpa told us not to hang out there anymore after 6 p.m. We asked our uncle what the dried stingray tail was for, and he said it was to drive bad spirits away. I wasn't exactly hiking, but I was walking through the woods at night. I hope this counts. So I, 13 slash F, many many years ago, early 90s, decided to sneak out of the house to meet my much older boyfriend, gross, I know. I left around 10 pm and returned around 4ish, maybe? I just knew it was still super dark. Coming home all of a sudden, I was worried about someone seeing me, I don't know why. So to get from his neighborhood to mine, I either had to walk along the highway or take a path through the woods. So I decide to take the woods, I have taken the path a million times. I was confident I would make it until I got in there. Um, I had never been in the woods before at night, and movies lie, you can't see shit. It's another level of darkness that I wasn't ready for. I started hurrying, and I almost made it to the end when someone lit up their pager two inches from my face. I scrambled and got there so quick and ran all the way home. Who or what could that have been? Someone is just chilling in the woods, waiting for someone. Someone is just taking the opportunity to scare a young girl. I have no explanation. I tell people this story, and nobody really understands the terror. I, maybe I'm a baby? BTW, it did not teach me anything, I was back out the next weekend. I just had my boyfriend take me home even if he was drinking. Kids are stupid. There was this walking trail that followed the river. The trail was supposed to be very old and used by Native Americans. I had walked it, but it was hard to access unless you started at one end. I knew a place where it was close to a road by a farmer's field. I wanted to use my metal detector to look for old coins. The farmer was there, and I had to ask permission, of course. I walked a few miles one way, then another. I found a funny brown bottle with 1929 dimes in it. There was a batch of trees next to the river connected to the farmer's field. It was sort of a big C curve in the river. It was a river on all sides and a cornfield on one side. There were animal skulls in the woods. I don't know what they were. Deer, then smaller things like a raccoon, maybe a skunk? The farmer was working in the field. He was kind of threatening looking. He was tall and bald. He asked what I found. I showed him the bottle. He said it was his grandfather's. 
He popped a similar bottle out of his pocket. Brown glass that said Bel Air. I gave it to him when I found it. He said, thanks. I told him about the animal skulls. He said, yeah? Show me. We walked to the spot with the skulls. He was quiet, but he wanted to see them. He poked the skull with his boot but didn't touch it. We saw another skull. He said, I think it's a dog. We left. He said he didn't like the woods. He was 76, and he had found skulls there since he was a boy. I gave some explanation. He said, animals' heads don't fall off while the body takes a walk.